Good morning. Welcome to all of you as we join for our kids' time here for St. James Lutheran. Um, this morning we're reading from the, the gospel reading from Luke's, um, Luke's gospel. And we hear about not only how, well, Herod, who was kind of like the kind of like the, the premier, if you want to think of it, for the for all of the Jewish people living in the Middle East in the area where Jesus was living um, in, in Israel there, and how um, Herod was, was wanting to kill Jesus. And we, we heard about that story already where, remember, John the Baptist came and then John the Baptist criticized him and then he, Herod, though, was a little bit nervous and a little bit scared because he understood that John the Baptist was a prophet, but... Um, Herod's wife basically got a little bit upset and so it kind of worked her way around so that she got Herod to, to have John the Baptist put in jail and then beheaded, all of these kinds of things. And Herod along the way started to think that maybe Jesus was John the Baptist come back to life, even though we know that Jesus wasn't that. Jesus came as the savior of the world. So here we hear about that, but then the way in which Jesus talks, he reminds us that you know, he knows that he came to die, you know, to die on the cross in order to take away our sins, but that the time wasn't ready. And he says, you know, when the time comes, that'll be the time, and we'll hear how that unfolds here. So starting with verse 31, Luke chapter 13, Luke records and writes how, at that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. And he said to them, go and tell that fox, he called Herod a fox, a sly kind of a fellow. Behold, I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow and the third day I finish my course. Nevertheless, I must go on my way today and tomorrow and on the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet should perish away from Jerusalem. Then he said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is forsaken, and I tell you, you will not see me until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That's the end of the reading, and so this is the gospel of the Lord, and we say, Thanks be to God. Now, as we listen to all of this, you know, there's a lot in there because here is Herod was threatening to, to take Jesus and have him killed. <clears throat> but notice that Jesus wasn't scared about that, at least not at that time. That's because he knew that, you know, he wouldn't die until the time that, that uh, it was right for him to die, all to take our sins onto him. But in the meantime, he had all kinds of work to do, not only to go and preach, to heal the sick and cast out demons and all of these kinds of things as a way to teach the apostles so that the apostles would learn more about you know God's love for for all of us and why and about Jesus so that you know on the day in which Jesus died and then rose again and then afterwards when Jesus would send them out in order to be the very first preachers of the gospel that they would understand and know how much God loves us and all of the things that Jesus did in order to save us so that, you know, we could hear and celebrate that love and be a part of that love through those things that we call the sacraments. And so Jesus knew that there was still time and he still needed to do all of these kinds of things. And he says, you know, you know, tell that Herod that I still have all of these things to do. But at the same time, he understood that, you know, he needed to go to Jerusalem and that he would die just outside of Jerusalem where he was crucified. And that's where he talked about that old Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets. Now, who were the prophets? Well, in the Old Testament, the prophets were the preachers, basically. And sometimes people talk about prophets that can see secret things and those kinds of things along the way. Don't get caught up on that because that isn't so much what the prophets were in the Old Testament. And so when we hear about prophets in the New Testament and in the Bible, they were preachers. They came to preach God's word, what God told them to preach. And along the way here... As we're reminded, because there's a long history of that in the Old Testament, how God would send some of the prophets to go and tell the people, you know, you need to listen and come back, come back to the Lord, repent, come back to the Lord, and, and to focus our attention on hearing what God has taught us in the Bible. And people always were stubborn. We see that even today. 
And we know from the Old Testament, and even the Old Testament reading, you know, I can get your moms and dads to read that for you from Jeremiah 26, verses 8 to 15, that, you know, even there, that was one of these examples where God sent Jeremiah to be the preacher, the prophet, and nobody wanted to listen to him, and they even threatened to kill him along the way. See, Jesus knew that and understood that because the long history of, of the Old Testament is, is that God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit would send these preachers to go and try and tell people that, you know, come on back. Don't, don't wander away from, from, from my love, basically, is God saying. And people kept turning their back and even getting angry and getting mad at these kinds of preachers so that Quite often, these prophets were killed in the city of Jerusalem or just around the city of Jerusalem. Jesus understood that, and then when he said to them, you know, uh, I, you will, uh, and, I, and I tell you, you will not see me until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I know you know exactly when that happens. That's when Jesus comes in and what we celebrate is Palm Sunday, right? It's the Sunday right before Easter. Remember where Jesus comes and rides in the back of a donkey going into the city of Jerusalem and everybody was all excited because some people thought he was going to become the new king and get rid of Herod and all of these sorts of things. Other people thought that he was going to be this great, great revolutionary, um, but they didn't realize that he came to die on the cross. And as they came in, people, as Jesus was riding in, people were saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And then they were putting palm branches down. Jesus knew and he understood that when he came into the city, he was going to come not in order to be a big leader and in order to knock heads together and make, you know, this sense of world peace so that nobody fights but in order to die on the cross to make a deeper peace between us and God by dying to take away our sins and then in order to give us his love and his forgiveness all through those things we call sacraments. As we hear this, it's important for us to learn right from when we're young onwards that the gift of God's peace that he gives us through Jesus is very different from just peace in the world. Even though peace in the world is a great thing to work for, at the same time, you know, the Bible reminds us that there will always be struggles and wars and conflicts and all of these kinds of things because, well, sin is still everywhere, even in our own hearts and the way in which we get mad about things, we fight over things and all these kinds of things. But Jesus comes to give us a different kind of peace, which, yes, you know, it's good to live in peace with everybody, and that's part of the New Testament teaching too, the Bible teaching too. But our true peace comes from knowing that not only because of what Jesus has done, our sins are forgiven, but also that even all those things that, you know, the way we get worried or scared or angry, and then we get grumpy and we fight and all of those sorts of things, all of those things that Jesus has come to take those and bring them to the cross, to die on the cross with them, so that those things don't need to rule our lives anymore, but instead he gives us his Holy Spirit to teach us more and more to let those things go, and then to love and to care for one another and show God's love and peace the way that we forgive even our mums and dads and our brothers and sisters, even our pets at home when they get a little bit too rambunctious and maybe scratch us as they're playing and those sorts of things, or maybe sit on us and those kinds of things, to forgive us so that we can forgive others too with that same strength. So today as we listen to this, it's a reminder, Jesus came, yes, to teach us, to show us his love, but most importantly to show us his love when he died on the cross all in order to well, help us to die to those broken parts of ourselves, but then also to be more and more people that live with the strength that he gives us. And so let's have a prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you that even though you knew that you were going to face all kinds of cruelty in this world, that you came in order to not only heal the sick and to die on the cross, all for us to take away our sins, to face that cruelty. We thank you that you give us that forgiveness. Help us to 
grow with that same hope and that same peace and that same love so that instead of acting on all of the worries and the fears or even the anger and all the other things that so easily rise up inside of us that we learn instead to keep our eyes on you and then learn to live that same love that you give to us in the way that we share that with other people as well. Give us your Holy Spirit so that, you know, the way that we're baptized into you and joined with you in your death and then in your resurrection, that we're baptized and our lives are hidden inside of yours, that we would be able to not only show that same love towards everyone around us, starting especially at home, but also that we would learn to keep our eyes on you and everything that we have and everything that we're about in our, so that we would be children of our Heavenly Father that show that same love of Jesus to everyone that we meet. Bless us today as we continue this, this journey through our Lenten season, as we get ready to celebrate that day that Jesus talked about, where, again, we'll join together with all of, all of the people at church to sing, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, as we cheer on our Lord and our Savior, recognizing that that week he goes and not only enters into Jerusalem, but then dies on the cross for us so that we can have life and forgiveness through him. We thank you for all of that. All these things we pray for in the name of Jesus, our Savior, our friend, our brother. Amen. And God bless you. Looking forward to that day, and hopefully we can have all kinds of you in, the, in, in church so that we can have some palm branches and we can join in singing some of those songs along the way too. God's peace be with you. Amen.